I've always been fascinated by audio programming. And in this video, we're going to do a very basic example of how to write a WAV file directly in C code. Um, so at the end, we'll have a program that will write out a single WAV file, and it's just going to play like middle C. And I'll walk through kind of like a few steps to get us there. To get us started, create a main function. What we'll first start with is probably the most complicated part of this which is creating the wave header. So this site describes what the wave file header looks like. And what we'll need to do is make sure that we're writing out this header in the correct way. And that's how players can identify a that it is a wave file, but also that tells it how it needs to play it. So here you can see the header is 44 bytes long. Start it has this riff string, uh, size of the overall file, another wave string, format string, uh, and then kind of just each one is a different piece of information. So as we create our struct, we use this as a reference. Okay. Create a struct with header. And the first thing we have is the riff. And so this is where we're going to put the, that string in. And the next that we have is the size of the overall file. And it says it's a 32-bit integer. So we use the 32 to call it something. Somewhere this does actually exist. STDIO. Again, have another one for wave. And another one yet for format chunk size. And so here, the, how I'm figuring out how large it is is based off of these positions. So here, 17 to 20 shows that it's four bytes. Um, so 32 bits would be four bytes. So that's this one, that's chunk size. And then uh, what's left? Now here for format, you can see it's only two bytes. So instead of int 32, we will have int 16. Tag, channels, sampling rate, It's bytes per second, and it's called bytes per sample. Bits per sample. Data chunk header, which again is just going to be four characters. And then finally, we have uh, data length. So, this is how long is of the data section which is really just going to be the same as this, except this one includes the 44 bytes of the header, and this one excludes it. There we have our header, and then next we can have a look at actually filling out that header. First, we create a struct. Then we'll start with the hard-coded strings, and we'll write all of those. So use string copy to do this. To use that, we'll need to include a string header. And so there is riff, four of them total. Format one needs a space at the end. Just use one channel for now. And the sample rate will do a very low 8000, and that's just because the audio that we're playing won't be too complicated. I was able to get the output playing and running fine without these next two ones. So I'll just add them in case there is a place that actually requires them. 
feet. And we'll just convert the bits to byte and then times the number of channels. Again, we're only using one, so it doesn't matter here, but this will keep this ready to go for the future. And I'm just now seeing that we could actually put this first, and then instead of this, can just do this. In order to get the data length, we need to know how long our audio is. And in our case, we're in control of this, so we're just going to specify this as 10 seconds for this example, and then to get our buffer size, uh, this will be the sample rate in seconds. And then we can use that to fill in our D length. So buffer size is seconds per sample. This will just be D length plus the header length, which we'll just hard code as 44. Now that we've written all properties of the wave header, we need to create some data to actually store. Uh, and what we're gonna do is play just a C constant C note for this whole 10 second duration. And then after that, we're gonna write it out to a file. So what we'll need is a buffer of our buffer size. And this should be an error, yeah. So currently, this is a variable, um, and this thing said it's, it cannot be initialized because it's a variable size. And what should fix that is we can just make it a separate variable that is constant. Replace that. And then we do that. That should go away. So now I can compute what that fixed size is at compile time. And this would obviously have to change if you had kind of some dynamic stuff, but for now, this is what we need. And then we can make a for loop. It goes across the entire buffer. And what we're going to do is we're going to fill each one with a short int using this. And I'll explain it after I fill it in here. Uh, C is 256 is the frequency. And I'm going to fill this all in, and then I will explain the same rate. And then this here. So first we'll need to include map. And so that will bring us in the cosine function and pi. And we're probably missing, it seems okay. Okay, so what is this doing? This is creating a cosine wave of a specific frequency. And so uh, depending on the note that you're trying to play, this frequency will change. So because i is essentially the index of the sample that we're on, when we divide by sample rate, what we're essentially doing is making it so that we have this 256 hertz cosine wave. Um, and so then we multiply by the 2 pi to get kind of this continuous uh, wave. And then lastly, this 1000 here, this could be almost anything, but basically this is the volume, the amplitude. Um, and so we're working with a short int. Um, and this calculated value here is going to go between negative one and one. 
And so really this number could be as high as the max value of a short int, or actually half of the max value of a short int. Um, but I found actually that 1000 gives you enough to actually hear it, and that's good enough. So you could adjust this to whatever you prefer. Right, a file pointer, open up test.wave file, and then we'll use fwrite to write our first our header. And it's two corresponds to the fact that there's two bytes per element in this array. And lastly, now we should be able to compile this. And that puts file a.out by default. And when we run this, now we'll see a test wave file created. You can see that here. If I hit play, it'll play a single note. Here I've opened up this wave file in Audacity to show what it actually looks like. I increased the amplitude so it's more dramatic to see here. But basically, each of these is a point that was captured along the wave file. And you can see that this is a cosine wave. Um, and again, the frequency of this wave is that 256 hertz that we created. Now you have an example of how to write a wave file using just C code. This is just a basic example, but I'll follow this up with a video where I extend this to actually play chords and essentially create an entire song just with code.